course on the Linux and programming languages. Today we will be continuing our discussion on the Linux, Linux basics. Um, today is the lecture three of uh, this four part series. Um, so let's uh, before we uh, start our discussion for today, um, let's review what we did uh, last time. So just a recap, um, the lecture one we talked about uh, the basics of Linux, we went through like some of the file system, the kernel, the uh, shell, in the last lecture we started talking about some commands, uh, specifically we covered several commands, uh, one is the maker to create the directory, rmdir to remove a directory, then rm to remove a file. We also saw the associated options and arguments um, and we also saw some dangerous commands that we do not want to really use it uh, unless we know exactly what we are trying to do for example the rm minus uh, rf um, which is a recursive and forced uh, delete and if you do an rm minus rf star or star dot star and if you do it from your from the root directory which is the flash that you know um, pretty much like everything can be wiped out and then um, uh, usually in uh, Linux um, the once the files are removed it is permanently erased so it is very difficult to get back. Um, so we saw that and then we also saw some editor commands uh, like cat um, we uh, Found out how to actually edit the file, um, and then you all, we also like um, uh, looked at the commands like less and more. Then we also did the cp command, which is the copy copying file uh, from one location to another. Um, we um, also like saw the variations of these copy commands, whether we copy a directory over um, or just a file over. What are the arguments for that? Things like that. We also saw a PWD or the present working directory um, to um, it's kind of like a, in a map uh, it says you are here. Uh, similarly, like I mean, if you do a PWD, it will tell you you are here or there exactly you are in, in terms of the hierarchy. Um, we also saw some usage of special characters like the greater than, the double greater than, bang bang, bang dollar. In this pipe command, I, I don't know whether we did that. Uh, if they haven't, we will do it uh, in the next uh, section. Um, and then also semicolon. Um, so you know that uh, the the greater than the single greater than symbol actually it's a command to actually add it into a file. So we could do like a cat then uh, greater than then a file name. To write into a into a file, and then if you do a Control D, then you can exit all of that, so that that whatever we write on the terminal will go into the that particular file name. Uh, the double greater than is more is like append to that file. Bang bang is the to execute the previous command. Um, in general, like bang denotes uh, that it is a command that needs to be executed. We will see this bang in another other places too. Like I mean, we will talk about that, and then we'll see um, how we can do it. Um, um, and then um, also we saw uh, this uh, semicolon, or that is basically a command separator. So in a line, you can have multiple commands separated by semicolons, and uh, the command interpreter will understand that as different commands and execute in a serious fashion. Uh, so pretty much now we know how to execute commands in a serial fashion and uh, also the these uh, various uh, use of various uh, special characters and uh, things like that. So now let us um, see some activities that we can do uh, based on the lecture 2. I'm just assigning you a couple of activities. One is um, try to use man. We learned about man in the first lecture. Um, use man to find more details on the CP command and uh, also the RM command. Um, 
as you know like CP is the copy and RN is the copy so just type man CP man RN see what, what you get. In terms of activity um, create a directory called the uh, deck 2 in your home directory and uh, create a file called lect2.txt uh, and it should contain the following information I have mastered how to create a file in Linux. Um, this you can do it in two ways uh, so by both ways and then also the copy this file over to another file called mylect2.txt. So you see here in uh, this mylect2 the way that we write it is basically start with a lowercase character and then whenever there is a word boundary we um, take the the next uh, the, the starting letter of the second word or the next word as an uppercase and then we continue on. Um, this particular way of writing is called the camel case so um, I think this will be preferred way to actually code in variables uh, or file names etc you will see this uh, more and more in the in future discussions when we go into the programming itself it is uh, it is easy to read um, people also do like um, separate the words uh, using underscore that is another way to do it but uh, I prefer this camel case which is, um, which is also like very prevalent with a lot of uh, programmers today. Um, so now let us look at uh, the topics for today's discussion. Um, now we will continue our discussion and uh, we will do some more deeper look into the Linux uh, system itself. Today we will learn about how to manage the file access, uh, what are the commands for doing that and what are each of the, what do each um, characters or various types what do they determine. And then we will also go into managing the system resources this is another big topic um, um, as to how do we control the program execution. Uh, we won't go into a lot of details in today's discussion we will only see how to access those uh, the system resources. We will also uh, talk in the, in the next lecture as to how to actually really go into controlling the, the resources themselves. And then finally we will finish today's discussion with uh, how to manage storage uh, which is also another key point because um, um, in a general Linux machine uh, the operating system can assume that uh, storage is infinite. Um, today the programs are becoming bigger and bigger and um, um, as you know like the operating system uh, once we start working on the Linux operating system. Uh, and if it is a Linux 64 bit operating system um, you have like all the two, 2 power 64 um, bits as the address space um, which is like um, trillion trillion um, or um, uh, number of bits to be addressed and uh, so it almost looks as if like it is an infinite uh, storage space but in, in fact the in reality like I mean limited storage. So then we need to know how to control the storage and how do we get information about how much storage is left so that we can plan and manage accordingly because uh, in reality the systems will have maybe like one terabyte disk. So how do we make sure that uh, um, we, we have enough space when we run programs and uh, we also look into like various types of uh, memory. Um, and uh, typically like I mean so you heard about it, hardware resources from the RAM and the, um, the main memory things like that. Um, we will see like how those terms uh, translate into the Linux system. So let us uh, begin our discussion uh, the number one is uh, the file access as I mentioned. So um, in one of the key determiners of the security within Linux is uh, because it has a very strict control on who can access the various files. So when you create a file it is not that uh, it is easily portable and basically anybody can access um, as you know the Linux system it is a multi user system so even others can actually come and see your directories and things like that. 
but are they really able to see the uh, see the file or are they able to write into your file or they can copy it into and uh, they can execute from your place so those are the key things that we will talk about um so essentially like the file permission the, the permissions that you grant um so when you create a file you you are the owner of the file and you can grant permissions to others the level of access that they you know, that uh, it's possible so um um a typical uh, way to find out what the level of access from any given file is to use the ls minus l command and here um um we'll go to the next slide and then come back to this uh, for, uh, and talk about the permission levels but i want to you to read this one the r means the read only write executable execute permission um and then let's look at this so here it's a ls minus l command on a particular directory um and then um, it's actually it's ls minus l a or al which also now uh gives us the hidden file to the it start with the dot um and then the file name so you look at um on the left hand side um we see that there are some characters here so the way to read this is the first one denotes the directory basically so if it's d then we know that that is a directory and if it is left blank then that we know that that's a file then you have three sets of three characters each and each one is rwx and this is in for this one particularly it's uh, this r dash x and then the third set is also r dash x and this is always the same basically it's rwx and this could be rwx too uh, and this also can be rwx so the way to read this is essentially like the first one as i said it's uh, mostly then denotes the what is a, if it is a directory or not the first set of this rwx characters that denote the user permission meaning what permission do you have as an owner of this file um to access this this particular file so for example the auto fsk you only have read and write permission so r stands for read w stands for write and x stands for execute so in this um, this particular auto fsk you have uh, just read and write permission and then the second three uh, the second set of rwx that denote what is the access permission for people who belong to your same group so in this particular instance you see the the the, the third column and the fourth column the third column denotes the owner of this particular or it it's called the user of this particular uh, directory and then the second column or or actually like one two three fourth column is actually the um, the group that this particular user belong to so again the six, second set of the three characters is the permission that you are giving to the um the group and finally the last three set you are saying that it's for everyone else so so for example in this particular um case the, the particular directory is uh, readable writable and executable if there are any executable uh, by this particular user and this group it's also called root the group uh, get the permission to read as well as execute that means that you can copy any files from this particular directory and everyone else also gets the read and the executable permission so that um, they can also copy as well as um, execute in this directory so the same thing like uh, if you look at this particular example the file dot out uh, you can tell me what it is it's again it's a file that you know and then the this person who is now is the user gets the read and write permissions and then all the others get just the read permission so fairly simple uh for example this media gets uh, the read write execute for everyone so let's look at 
uh, how we can control the access um, when we when we have like others accessing this um, these files. So the particular command called change mode is uh, allows the users to change the permissions on uh, for a given uh, user. So in the change mode again um, we can specify um, the various uh, options which are essentially the whether user group or others or all and then what is the permission. And then um, the the argument is the file file name or the directory name. Um, actually, like uh, for the um, yeah, mostly it is the file name. Uh, and we see like how we can change it uh, here. And then um, you can change the group permission of a given file just by changing by using the change group. And uh, change ownership is essentially if you want to transfer the ownership of the file. From you to somebody else, another user. So then uh, you can use the change one or the ch one. So uh, let's look at an example. Uh, here, the change mode. We give seven five zero and file name. So one thing that I mentioned was. Uh, the first set of three, second set of three, and third set of three. These numbers can be expressed in binary option. So you can think of this as a one bit stream essentially, starting from the first RWX because the D is actually it's denoted by just the directory, whether it's a directory or not. So now, we, if you look at this one, it's all like it assigns one bit at a time. So it's there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bits in total, and each set of three can be can go from zero 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 to one one one. So now tell me how many combinations are possible. So as you know, since you're all like electronic engineers, you know that actually there are eight combinations possible. So you can represent numbers from zero to seven. So, so for each of them, you can represent either zero to seven. We don't combine it, and then we don't use any other thing. Basically, we only like go up to uh, a radix eight uh, notation. So, the change mode has this radix eight notation. So here, when we say like seven five zero, that means that the user gets the complete permission, which is read, write, execute. And then comes the five for the group, which is only the read and execute. So the middle number is nothing basically. And then finally, the others cannot even read or write or execute. No permissions. So here, essentially, like I mean, so we can we can look at various things and see what the corresponding number is. So can you tell me, like I mean, what the number for this copy directory is? You look at it; it's seven, five, five. What about uh, say the desktop? For the desktop, it's actually six because it's one one zero, right? And then six, four, and four. Easy enough. Um, we will we'll give you some more uh, practice uh, ones that you can um, go through this uh, exercise. And then see how to do use the change mode. Um, and uh, this particular shell also offers uh, some uniqueness. Essentially, like and we talked about this in the first lecture or the second lecture, I think, um, where it actually color codes the file names so that you know what is what. For example, the AXIRTL uh, is actually it's a directory. And then AXIRTL dot zip is like an executable or um, it's, it's, it's a binary file. And then the the green is the text file, uh, things like that that we already know about this one. So um, we we will see as to how 
the operating system determines what type of a file uh, it is and then uh, how it, it can actually uh, uh, put together. Uh, actually in this case like the make file is actually more like uh, it treats it as a script on the side in like it's uh, in black color. Um, so let us look at that uh, and um, now we go into like some more system resource commands one is uh, how to report a date. So the command is just the date uh, when you give the date it, it tells you like I mean what is the current date and the time so it gives you the, the day the date and also the time and it gives you the time zone and the year. So a simple command essentially this is used in um, programs then uh, you want to print the start point you just issue a command date and then once the program finishes you issue another command date and then now you can actually compare in between how much time the program took and then you can take meaningful actions based on the, that uh, information. Okay, and then uh, the next one um, is uh, the change shell command. Essentially, this is to change uh, the user's login shell. Um, it um, So you can you can actually like issue this thing and then basically the system will prompt for what the new shell is. If you just type enter, then it retains it as the TCSH. Otherwise, it's changed to bash, for example. So it's an easy command to move from one shell to another. Sometimes, like some uh, programs are. Um, 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 they they do want a particular shell uh, and they want to execute in a particular shell because it demands certain resources and certain uh, control of resources. So this is an easy way to actually change the uh, the shell. Excellent. Now let's look at uh, how how can we change the password. Uh, this is one of the important commands. So. Um, here the command is just passwd or password just call it password and then uh, you can give options um, I would like you to find what are the options available using man password or something like that. Um, but in general when you type password the system will prompt you to enter the new password and um, it checks against certain pre specified rules. In this case, uh, it's actually it is uh, checking against a dictionary. So if you specify a dictionary word, it rejects that password because it doesn't want a password to be in the dictionary so that somebody can copy it very easily. Um, the system administrator can set up various rules for governing the password. Uh, so he can demand certain length of the password and demand certain special characters included in the password. Today most passwords in minimum of 8 characters um, needs a special character a number uh, and a case difference. So um, that that kind of uh, gives like a lot more authentication and um, so for the user. So um, once it uh, you type in a valid password then it updates the existing password and there is a password file where all these passwords are kept. And um, I think like you can tell me like what will be the permissions for that one. So if you have if you are listening to the earlier slides, the permission for that file that is protected only protected and it's only system administrator can actually um, change that value. Um, so in general, what happens is when you type password, the the password command actually gets control of that particular file um, and then it lets you edit that file only for your entry and then once you enter then it is again put back and then the permissions are reverted back and then only the the, uh, the system administrator or the, the root user can really uh, access that at that point. Uh, it is a it is a not read not write not execute. I mean maybe execute only by the user. 
so if you in terms of the the uh, the uh, the the numbers that uh, we uh, saw earlier it could be like uh, 0 0 or actually it will be 1 1 uh, actually no, sorry I will take it back it is 7 1 1. So as a as a group uh, person or as an others you can only do just uh, um, execute. Because you don't want to see others password and uh, you don't want others to see your password. Now we go into our uh, second topic. Uh, this probably will take a long time uh, in today's discussion. Um, uh, we already started talking about this, but uh, I wanted to highlight what is a process in terms of uh, in in the in, in the context of Linux. So one key thing is um, when we talk about uh, Linux, uh, we talked about the kernel, we talked about the shell, we talked about the file system. Um, another key thing is also uh, is, a, is a process. Um, in in Linux, any instance of a running program is called a process. Here, this is the exact quote from the Linux manual, which is um, which is actually listed here. The reference. Uh, it's a program, uh, or the way they define it is as follows: a program is a set of machine code instructions and data stored in an executable image on a disk, and it is a passive entity. So, a program they call it as a passive entity, which is there in the disk, hasn't been executed. But a process can be thought of uh, as a computer program in action. So, when the when the program moves to the shell and starts executing that is what is called a process. So what are the types of processes for example the shell by the nature it is there and it is getting executed that itself is a process and any command that you type in and then as soon as you press enter that is a process that becomes a process. So how do we know that uh, what a process is so the operating system itself assigns a unique process ID uh, the process ID is also called PID to every process so it is a number that the operating system assigns to the particular process so as soon as I mean internally what happens is um, as soon as you type in a command and press enter the operating system takes over it looks at that command it first Assigns a process. A process is a specific set of resources required to run that program, and then it starts that process and it assigns that process ID so that it can track at any point what is happening to the process. Because the states of process uh, is very important. The state could be running running uh, the process, or it's a waiting process, or it's a stopped process, or a zombie process. So we will see how we can distinguish these processes in a much later stage, but at least like I want you to understand that the way the commands are run is by using these processes. So one of the key things is how do we control these processes and how do we report these processes that is what we will be learning in the next few slides. So to view the processes that you are running the simple command is called ps or process show um, essentially if you do a ps minus all or ps minus a that displays all the processes that are running on that particular cpu um, again this is a multi cpu system linux but uh, the way and it is also a multi user so in and uh, multitasking so it the multi user and the multi task is all represented in the PS. So you can just type PS minus A, and in this case, actually uh, PS minus AUX, which is essentially which stands for um, the processes that are um, that all the processes, including the user processes and the processes that are executing in the background, which is without a terminal. Display all the information that is the PUX. 
and then you can also specifically say like ps minus u and then the username and then it will display the processes specific to that particular user and here um, we use some commands this we will learn in the uh, next section called the grep and I also mentioned earlier that this pipe command which is essentially uh, the way to do inter process communication. So inter process communication we use many many things one is this pipe uh, command the pipe command gets the output of this ps minus aux process and then feeds it into the next command. So we know like semicolon separates the, the various uh, commands. Uh, so far we have been calling them as commands but once they start executing like now that we know the term called processes we should really call them as processes. So the semicolon is that process separator where it separates from one process to the, uh, another whereas the pipe command actually takes the output of one of the processes and feeds it into the, the next one. So here also like the, the program execution is still going to be like serial but output can be fed into the, the next one. Um, we will also like uh, encounter other forms of uh, this inter process communication um, there are something called T and uh, semaphore which we will learn about in, in a later stage. So let us look at uh, how this PS uh, command is issued and what is what are the outputs. So in a in a simple um, scenario when you type PS this is a single user this particular machine is used just by all this particular session is used by just one user and now it displays um, essentially like this information which is the PID I mentioned the process ID which is 30380 that is assigned to this the shell, so it starts from this, this particular uh, terminal TTS5 and then uh, it started at time 0 and uh, the command is itself is the TC shell and then since we type the PS that PS actually started another process that ID is 30494 and the process command is PS. So simple enough and we can it can be more complicated than this um, but at least like we will we will know how to um, display these processes. Now the process display is a passive display meaning it is given at a point of time but how come how can we um, look at at least uh, the system resources on an ongoing basis we want to see how things change on a continuous basis and when we are running a program we want to know how much the program is taking because there is no point in actually like running PS every time we have to do it like every microsecond. So there is another command for that which is the top, the top command is used to view the CPU usage of all the processes um, it is basically just type in top and then this process does not stop actually this keeps running. So unless you press Q to actually quit from that, so here you can see much more um, details. Um, number one, it tells you how what is the time that this particular CPU, or this particular operating system is up and running. So in this case, it is running for two days, 42 minutes, and it has multiple users, six users in total, and there are 133 tasks total of which only one is running 132 are sleeping and then nothing is stopped and there are no, there are no zombie processes. So the task is synonymous with the, uh, the processes and as I mentioned like the states are running sleeping stopped and zombie. So how much is the C, the CP utilization here it is only like 0.7 percent uh, by the system and then 0.1 percent is for the sorry 0.7 percent is the user task, 0.1 percent is the system task and uh, various others basically um, and then here we also have a concept of the memory. Um, so 
usually there are two two or three types of memories actually um, one is the main the memory that is um, available there is also some a concept of virtual memory which we will talk about and then finally the swap the swap space so the So here um, we see that basically this has about uh, 200, 206 uh, megabytes um, of which about 117 uh, actually it is about 2.6 uh, gigs are available uh, total uh, and of which like about 1.1 one gig is used and another 894 meg is free and then there are buffer allocated already in this one and then there is a swap space which is a separate one which is of another 5 gig and then everything is free in that swap space and now you see actually the real meat of the, the command which is um, it displays the processor ID who is the owner of the process and then the various uh, notations this we, we will talk about it uh, later so here there is also like the virtual memory which is displayed as to how much virtual memory it is taking how much resident memory it is taking and then uh, this is the shared memory and then finally the, the CPU percentage and then how much time it is running so and this particular display is uh, updated um, very frequently. It is not like um, it, it displays once and then it comes out uh, basically it keeps changing continuously it is very similar to the task manager that you start in the Windows uh, program um, and it also displays uh, on a continual basis as to how the CPU and the memory is consumed same thing here and you can see that there are multiple processes and, uh, and various uh, parameters on that. And PR denotes the priority, uh, and then this is the niceness basically. And so we will talk about these these uh, additional things um, in the next lecture. So now an important thing basically once you know like how you know how to run the process, how to start a process, which is essentially give a command. But now how do you kill the process? This is also another key important things essentially. Um, the the command is essentially kill. So the kill is uh, to terminate the process, and um, you can use uh, the process ID as uh, as a um, um, as a way to identify which process to kill. And then uh, there are there are options available for this particular command. Again, the argument is the process ID. And then uh, the options are essentially the signals. So here, the kill minus nine means nine is the highest level of uh, the that, that particular signal, which means that immediately kill and don't even worry about anything. Like you know, there is uh, uh, nothing, just kill the process. So. Um, the, the essentially it generates this um, signal called sick kill which is essentially it will kill the process for sure there is uh, no questions asked just kill it um, the kill zero essentially means uh, terminates all the current processes except your shell so anything else is running like this is like even without any argument just uh, kill zero and then it will kill all the processes that are running on that particular CPU um, so once we also like know how to communicate and how to uh, use the network you will see like other commands uh, to work with the, the load balancing systems probably like we, we will learn about that in the fourth lecture, in the next lecture. so here um, this is the top command or actually it is a PS minus U where um, displays all the processes running by this particular user and you have the process ID so you kill this one it is actually right here the this particular sorry 
the 30508 is right here and that is the top amount so that one you can just scale it using the scale minus one. Okay, so now let us uh, go into some more commands to identify to, to um, use it for identification purposes. So the number one is uh, who, um, as we mentioned the Linux is a multi user system, but you can know who are all logged in into the system by typing the uh, who command and uh, it gives you the, the name of the, the user and also which terminal that they are using very useful command to see if your friend is logged in into your system um, also you can see if there are any spurious persons logged in into your system um, so just typing this who will get you like all the all the active uh, windows and from where they are connected to and then um, so these are their IP addresses and then basically like when did they start. And then you can also again uh, very similar to the PWD which is present working directory where hey I want to know where exactly I am in this uh, whole file system. Similarly you can also ask hey, who am I essentially and the command is just who am I and uh, that gives you the details about that particular window and that particular user who is using this one. Sometimes what happens is um, there are um, systems that are left by somebody else maybe like in the wrong windows that are open which you are not sure whether it is uh, you are the owner and you need to kill it or you need to you need to keep it going. So uh, who am I is an SD command to figure out whether it is indeed you who logged in into the system into that particular window or was it somebody else. So there are two variations here one is if you notice actually this is this one is who that who space and space I and that gives you more details and if you continuously type in just who am I in uh, one word then that gives you just uh, your username it does not give you like a lot of details uh, more than that. Now we come to the, the, the third section which is uh, how do we control um, the disk space or uh, um, essentially um, so one thing to note is um, in um, in Linux we said that basically everything is um, through the directories and uh, essentially um, even this can be mounted in various directories so the various mount points are also given as uh, directories. So you can it is very easy to add additional disk space that if you want or remove a particular disk also. Uh, so at any point people could remove stuff uh, or add more stuff into the system. So one of the key things that we need to know is um, how do we uh, what is the availability and uh, how much disk space is there that we can use and uh, also um, if where exactly is that uh, this located. So the commands that uh, we study right now are du uh, which is essentially it stands for disk usage and uh, gives you the options I mean you, you can give the options as well as the argument argument is the directory or the file uh, gives it gives you the exact amount of disk space in use essentially. So we will see like how this command gets executed. Um, if the du minus sh the file or directory that gives the size of the file or the directory and then the other one is the df uh, command the df minus h and the df minus kh this one gives you the available space mounted on a file system. So the du is more like uh, the particular um, um, uh, file uh, the particular directory itself essentially as to how much it is getting uh, how much space it is being used uh, is being used by that directory whereas a df will give you uh, 
uh, more information regarding the whole disk itself as to what is the available space, how more, where is it mounted and things like that. And then uh, free is another command which gives you the amount of free space in the um, um, in the system. So let us look at an example with uh, these, so here um, so there is uh, this home within which has uh, various uh, files in the directory, so you do the ls and then you know all the things. Um, now you want to know like I mean what is the size of this uh, text one dot text. So you can say the u minus sh this is the text dot text text one dot text and then it gives you it is uh, about 4 k. Um, you can get this information also by just using ls minus l that you already know about uh, assuming uh, and that gives you on the fifth column I think will display the amount of space that the, the e to the file is taking. Typically for directories it lists as 0. So the du minus sh at directory will also specify will give you the amount of space taken by that directory. Then the df minus h here actually gives you the particular file system and as I mentioned the, the disks are even though they are hardware objects they are they become directory so which is in slash dev slash da 10. So slash dev is all the the disks are mounted on that one and then here it is uh, 112 g is the size out of which uh, 110 is being used and the use is actually 100 percent because these two cannot be represented so it is really 100 percent so you need to go and like change this one. And then there is a something called none and then uh, basically uh, about uh, 1 gig is there and then all the things are available and that is mounted on slash dev SHM. So now um, you also have this command free and that, that gives you like I mean how much is the total memory, how much is used and how much is free. And then uh, there is a shared memory, some of the buffers that are, uh, that are special types of memory. Uh, the cache area is another special one and then uh, how much swap space is available, the swap space is essentially um, uh, required for swapping a program with another one, so processes when you swap processes you need this uh, swap space. So um, I think uh, this is probably the end of uh, the lecture 2. Um, so um, again um, we talked about uh, several things, um, I just wanted to recap one, one more time um, the, the things on the lecture 3 essentially like we looked into more looked deeper into the Linux system, we understood how to manage the file access, the various permissions uh, like um, um, R, W and X and then the various groups and the user group and the everyone else, so how do we give access as well as how do we change access of various files. Uh, we also talked about managing the system resources uh, from the perspective of um, what are the, what is the process and how do we control the process. Um, so again we talked about one key aspect of the system resource which is the pipe command essentially how to um, pass the output of one process into another process. We will talk more about the processes in the next uh, lecture where we will go into some more additional commands like T and uh, um, uh, and fork, uh, a fork is essentially like T and then uh, the other one is um, um, the semaphore basically which is uh, which is a concept to understand how the interprocess communication really works. Uh, we also talked about the storage itself, um, we differentiated between the, the memory, the swap, the virtual memory etc. Uh, there are special memory elements like buffers uh, and cache areas which um, are locations but you cannot write into it because those are used by the system itself for writing um, and then we also saw how we can control um, 
or at least get information regarding the usage of uh, the resources from these uh, from using the commands like du and df and the free command. Uh, one thing that I will add is um, we talked about uh, the various colored representation by the OS uh, regarding which file it thinks it is. Um, so as you know um, in um, in Linux or in with any the Unix type of operating system you have uh, you can write scripts that we will see more and more um, and also we have regular files the flat files. So the way to um, use a, or write a script is essentially we need to preface the script with the, with whatever the shell that we want to use usually in the form of a hash bang then we will specify which shell that we want to use like uh, maybe user bin wish user bin just sh will also work. So if we specify that line as the first line in the file then the interpreter treats that um, file as a script and then it actually runs that uh, the, the script itself it knows that it can it can it. Uh, you still need to give the file permission as the execute permission but uh, the difference between a normal file and a executable file is uh, um, I mean executable file in the form of a script the script is essentially it is a human readable program. So usually that one uh, you will have that that as the first uh, line. So uh, once again I want to thank you um, all for listening this lecture and we will pick it up on the next one uh, from this point. Thank you very much.